nobody answered it. So just in case somehow that whoever left that comment is listening, I'm finna answer your question. Uh, and the question was, so what's so important about having a church family? Right? And I'll be honest, right here, I didn't necessarily take a turn in the, in the lesson. Uh, I think it goes along the same point, but it weighed on me because if that, whoever that was, if they have that question, there's no telling how many other people in this world have that question. That's right. So I figured tonight would be a good time to answer that question. Uh, there's Perfect. several answers, and we're going to go through them. Too much of my name? Yeah, may I speak on that? Oh, yeah, go. Go for it. Oh, about a year ago, you know, when I decided to, to allow God to, to work on me and I took a stand and a walk with him, uh, I didn't know the importance of do not forsake the assembling of the brethren. And I was with, honestly, now, from what I've grown to know, worldly type people, you know, and that not being judgmental or poking any blunt at anybody, but there were, you know, there were ways of the world. But uh, ultimately, through the end, God's did a lot of separating with me from certain ones like that but at the same time he's also done a whole lot of healing and within my immediate family and you know uh the ones that have been separated were or some of them have been immediate friend family and some of them have just been a long lifetime friends but uh ultimately in the end you know and y'all guys y'all know very well that i've openly admitted to y'all that god has ultimately showed me the importance of of, of the brethren because in the end when I run back to as what the uh, preacher has said past comforts I wind up finding myself back in the worldly ways overwhelmed consumed fearful uh, shameful being starting to enter into sin but yet when I go to the brethren which is what God has led me to these guys ultimately when they go through God it's a whole different demeanor and the outcome is a whole different demeanor. Absolutely. I would agree. I would agree. I, I can simply, um, yeah, well, I can, I can identify with that to a degree because all y'all know, and for the people out there who don't, um, I was in the military. Joey was too. Uh, if I can tell you right now, if I'm not extremely careful and I, I love all the people <laughs> I served with, they were some great people, some great human beings. Um, if I'm not careful, and I get on the phone with one of them just catching up or, or by some happen chance we actually meet and hang out, boy, it's real, real difficult not to go back to the way I used to do things. Amen. That, Even in the civilian mouth, world of it. With alcohol, you name it, it's real difficult. Amen. I agree. Yeah, even in the but, civilian world of it, it's, it's still rough. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, moving along here like i said so the question was what value is there to becoming like a family to other believers well i think that um acts uh chapter 2 verse 42 could be considered a basic statement for church activity right and it says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and it in breaking of bread and in prayers that's that to me that's the basic like I said that's the basic functionality of, of a church body the, the Bible places importance on the church family unit because of the following reasons and I'd like to go um, kind of one by one because like I said I got a few here so I'd like to go one by one and and get each of yours take on it I think that'd be really valuable um, so the first one is the obvious one to me we study God's word together, just like we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, this often comes in Bible studies like we're doing now, like I said, teaching from the pastor on Sunday, Sunday school lessons, or just general interaction. It, it, I don't know if y'all notice this, but anytime any of us get together, if I get on the phone with Bill, if I get on the phone with Joe, if I get on the phone with Jacob, if I get on the phone with David, inevitably the the Bible comes up, Jesus comes up. It's it's just a way of learning. We all learn together, and it's much easier to learn in a group. Mm -hmm. um, the church family is actually called to grow spiritually together, spurring on one another. In Second Timothy three sixteen, it says, "All Scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction." 
and for instruction in righteousness. That that right there lets you know if you study the Bible, it teaches you. It teaches you doctrine. That's what to do for those that are unfamiliar with the word. It's mm -hmm. there for reproof. So it's going to re-show you what you're supposed to do. It's going kind of like if you have small children, you have to repeat to them. Yeah, the Bible has to repeat to you <laughs> because humans are stubborn. And then for correction and instruction, right? Correction is exactly why all this would be a good example. I use myself, right? I know I told Bill. I'm pretty sure I told Joey. And I know I told Jacob specifically on this lesson that I was concerned with all the verses that I was putting in here individually because I didn't want any of them to be taken out of context, right? Right. The correction part of this, and this comes from being in a church family, is I was very comfortable coming to all of you saying that, and I'm, at least I'd like to hope I said, y'all please correct me if I do it wrong. If I say something wrong mm -hmm. or out of context, please correct me, because I don't want to misspeak. That's what a church family's for. That's it's correct. to keep you in line. I agree. So like I said, that that's just the first part, and like I said, I'd like... On specifically on the, the we study God's word together part of being in a church family if anybody's got anything to say like that I'd like to hear it well what well, here's you an example I know our preacher gets frustrated every now and then but his daddy Ray is often interjects on the same topic and it might be um, uh, what a bad timing maybe because preacher will be on a roll or whatever but that's exactly what you're talking about. That's, it's, that's exactly what you're talking about. I, I that's, just... that's true. Man, uh, it's, it's, it's total to build one another up. Yes, there's there's anybody that's taking the Word of God and studying it, from the pastor to the congregation. There's things that you're gonna you're gonna get out of the message or out of the Word of God that whoever the person that studied does not get. And it is for it's for edification. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody else before I move on to the next um, one? I'm trying to think of the right word here. Um, justification. That's what I'm um, Back to the topic of the, the interjecting during Bible study. Um, I find it fascinating when it happens. To be honest with me you, too. I really do because it gives me an insight of how wonderful God's word is. Because two different people had the exact same words at the exact same time, and they didn't even study it together. You know what I mean? Yep. It, it, it's amazing how God, the Spirit, can hit two different people at the exact same time and still get the end result being the exact same. That's right. Um, I, I, I love that. I mean, even like when, when Herschel calls me on the phone and y'all think we had this, what, last week when this happened? I was like, yeah, that, that, that sounds like this. And you're like dead on the point. And you, it, to me, it kind of builds you up even closer in a brotherhood because we are like-minded people. And like-minded people tend to go the same direction as each other. Well, right. when when we're doing this, like-minded people join in with us, and the Word of God, the Spirit of God, reaches out and brings them to us, which makes every single issue that we face even more beautiful. So I, I just wanted to put that in there. I just, it's just fascinating to me. Like, I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes, Pastor, I understand, you know, you, you want to get in the rhythm. You want to get in the rhythm. But don't think for one second anybody's sitting there saying, you know, uh, no, it's not that. I, I'm loving it, to be honest with you. And Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Oh, I, I personally enjoy when, um, you know, Jacob's dad interjects like that because, like you said, th let's all be clear. He is a historian like no other in our church. I would 100% agree with that. And that's the I part totally. that I enjoy. That's the part that I really, because I, not only am, is Jacob giving, you know, the, the, the lesson and, and the giving the word and all that, but then you get the, the, the other piece of the historical part behind it. And I, I thoroughly enjoy that. I like history anyway. I agree. If, if I might add, if, if I might add, uh, 
I think it's and y'all and y'all correct me if uh, if I'm wrong. I think it's safe to say that God speaks to each one of us in a way that each one of us understand individually. And and what I mean by that is He speaks to me the way that I'll understand, not necessarily the way that Joey understands. And He speaks to Jacob in a way that Jacob understands, not necessarily in the same sense that Bill understands. So with that. Yeah, I think that becomes the uh, interjection part, but it doesn't mean that anything is wrong on either hands. It's just a different point of view. And when it comes to the gathering of the uh, family, uh, brethren in church, you know, when you go to the brethren in church, you're ultimately going to get a few different situations, you know, as far as have you prayed about it? When's the last time you went to Jesus about it? Uh, had have you been reading the way that you should? Have you been praying the way that you should? When you go outside of the brethren and outside of the church that God has led you to, you're going to get the worldly ways, which is, I tell you what I would do. I would go yeah. over there and I kick the door in and I tell them all what I thought and exactly what I felt. And I take back what was rightfully owed to me because it's mine and and that's the way you're going to get from the worldly way mm-hmm. but that is not what god would have us to be is that nature of person agreed agreed so if y'all don't mind we'll move on to the next one so the next reason why it's important and, and or more important the value of having a church family is we honor god together through worship right amen uh, there is a unifying factor when believers worship God together, where it's through music, preaching, serving, I- any of that. And if you haven't noticed, um, as we've gone through this session, every single verse that I've quoted so far has been from the New Testament. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, this is not a idea or a concept of the church being a family or that you should, you should be united when you worship, this isn't a, a, a single, it's not a New Testament idea at all. So the next one is, is actually from Psalms, which, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure that's in the Old Testament. Um, yeah. Psalms 34.3 emphasizes the call to worship together in unity. It says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together, right? So Amen. three three times there, it called for you being in a group, in a multitude with somebody in one sentence. And it, like I said, not a New Testament concept. That's, that's from the Old Testament. It's, it's consistent throughout the Bible, throughout the Word of God, that you should worship with other believers. That's right. Amen. And then check it all the time. Yep. And then, and well, before I move on to the next one, anybody got anything to say about that one? Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, as far as it being prevalent in the Bible to to go to church, to join with your brethren and all that, there is so many things that you can get from being around your church family. You know, when the, when the world does go to weigh in on you, and let's be honest, if, if all of us in here can be honest, including our preacher, the world will try to weigh on you sometimes. And if you Amen. ain't if you ain't sharp and you don't keep Jesus Christ in your life where he's supposed to be, the world will get a hold on you again. And Amen. uh being um like like a lot of people think, well, I go to the eleven o'clock church service. That's good enough. I used to be one of those people. You are missing half of God's blessings by not going to Sunday school and not coming back on Sunday night and then not being on there on Wednesday night. They are, they are blessings that God is shoveling out that you're missing out on because you're not there. Well, Bill, and, it's, kind of, it's kind of like this. It's like you're, filling, you're taking a car and the, the, you're driving and you're only putting a quarter tank of gas in and you're right. trying to go just as far as you can on that quarter tank of gas. Where if you would have took the time to have 